Visery. I'm in charge of the uh, Ivory subsidiary for Test Group. So it's, uh, we're taking care of the uh, Spanish market, Portuguese market, the Australian market, and also pouring into the Latin American market. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what are you showcasing in Cybers 2016? Well, we're showcasing mostly three products, uh, three solutions. One is, for, is designed for all the Swift connectivity, network connectivity. Obviously, it's a Swift uh, show, so we do, do a lot of emphasis on the Swift, but also on all the networks because we connect financial institutions to, to those different uh, networks. We have a second product, which is basically uh, focused on the uh, capital market and treasury. All the liquidity management is very important for the financial institutions. They have to you know, know the position in cash, know the position in uh, in securities, know the position in collateral, which is basically how they can, you know, get get some cash out of security. And we've got a solution for that. And the last one we have is pay test. It's basically a solution to uh, manage all the uh, the relationship with the uh, the citizens and uh, offering them a, a unique portal so where they can get all the uh, the money they own to the state or to the region or to the uh, city council. I would like to speak today about uh, blockchain DLT. So tell us a little bit more about that because uh, everything people talking about in cybers in general to, today and last year it was all about blockchain. Yes. You're professional in the field. So what's uh, in your opinion is the future for blockchain? It hasn't been legalized yet. There are obviously Correct. some yeah. obstacles and what are they? Well basically blockchain serves uh, multiple purposes but still the uh, emerging technology as I said is to technology so you know it comes from a technology capability not from a business need and now people are starting to find the business need that can, that can be felt fulfilled by this uh, technology many different uh, project pilots are on the streets so you can see a lot of literature on this uh, particular things I think what the banks are finally getting in their mind is that a blockchain allows them to do things differently in terms of faster payment, in terms of uh, you know getting into the uh, different market, different uh, solutions they didn't have today. B, it gives them a different uh, philosophy of doing things. Today, banks are very much centralized. You've got everything centralized within the bank. Then, if it's not centralized within the bank, it's centralized within the central bank. And the distributed ledger technology (DLT) blockchain is allowing them to distribute this. So obviously it's scary at first, but it's also a way to you know uh, mix a bit uh, the information and not have everything on one side. Obviously, uh, you do that with trusted uh, parties. So if you look at the latest uh, press releases uh, from a bank like Santander, you know they party uh, with a, a couple of other uh, financial institutions they trust, and they say, okay, we do a DLT all together because we all, you know, three, four big banks, we trust each other and so on, but they're not opening to anybody else, you know, outside. So it's one step at a time. It's a technology that will bring some, some value to the market. But it's true that uh, people like Ripple, we work with them, they've got a special agreement. We see that they bring a difference to the equation by uh, allowing, you know, the faster connectivity, uh, easy money uh, conversions, the currency conversions. It's very interesting. <laughs> So, uh, is it easy to implement um, blockchain DLT, the, uh, the technology, uh, or, I mean, what are the challenges of implementing DLT? I would say challenging is regulatory, as we were saying. It's not yet completely legal in the sense that uh, uh, central bank are not yet on board with this. Uh, it's challenging in the sense that they've been doing, you know, centralized uh, management of information for so many years that now you're telling them they will have only part of the information, the other part is with another party. That's scary. I understand that. But at the end of the day, it's just messages, you know, being exchanged and so on and so forth. So I said implementation is not that complex. You know, well, that's what we are for. That's what we do. But at the end of the day, it's more the architecture and getting the ecosystem uh, up and uh, up and running, basically. Do you have a practical um, example to give us uh, where DLT was implemented? Well, we've been working on a couple. One with the uh, Ripple I just mentioned is the uh, you know about the foreign exchange, so having a. Uh, and of different entities in different countries exchanging currencies so you can get a faster uh, currency exchange on, on the spot and then you you know you between the different parties you know so that's a, a good case actually I think Ripple has a solid case and we are helping them in this process the second case that we see also is that you, you can um, find an alternative to the uh, you know I have my main side I have my back side and so on so you, by having a DLT architecture then you have you don't have to have so many uh, big 
fortresses, you can have multiple sites and so on, but that, again, as I said, is scaring the people, so it's still one step at a time. But I think it's going to bring value to the IT infrastructure of the banks. Is it a real-world technology operating under existed uh, banking infrastructures, current regular laws, or it might be the notion of digitizing um, a law as well as currency in the future? Sorry, it's a long question. I <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, I'd say... Uh, it is clearly a digital world. It's still, uh, you know, uh, it, when, when banks are creating their bank uh, 2015 to 2020 plan, in which we are participating and so on, they put this on the on the radar. So we are in 2016, ending 2016, and they start, you know, to to start to see some implementation for that uh, technology. So it's clearly a technology of the digital world. As we said, from a legal standpoint, it's still in the gray area. So yeah. people try it, you know, and uh, and they will demonstrate that it works because it does work. But it has to it has to also change the mind of the people, change the mind of the financial institution. But at the end of the day, for the end user like you and me, where we have an account in the bank and we're doing services with the bank, it's gonna come better and faster. But we won't know it's a DLT in the back. You know, it's whatever technology we don't know I mean, as, as users. But they will save on cost, they will say be faster in confidence. But what is actually um, the main obstacle for banks to actually accept blockchain in general? Because it's, it's not the material money they can count, it obviously takes time and the system. Uh, it are actually banks are the main organizations which are um, kind of against the whole system. How would you kind of um, find a solution to convince banks that this is actually one of the uh, steps forward? If it would be regulated, obviously, but if it means regulated, it's centralizing, and the, this is a decent, by the essence of decentralized technology. So obviously when uh, something comes uh, uh, as a rule from the European Central Bank or from the Visa, MasterCard or SWIFT of this world, this is regulated in a sense and people just have to apply and implement the technology. That's what we do for a living. But then when it's something which is not yet regulated, you know, it's every implementation is different. So it, it asks for a lot of flexibility from our side as a technology suppliers, but obviously uh, it's still a very fragmented market as we call it for us because it's, it's business. And then at the end of the day, a couple of these initiatives will be, uh, will be uh, successful and that will bring you know, uh, an idea of how we can make it work and how we can uh, make get some rules. But to make it faster, you know, when we first came out, like some years ago, two or three years ago, when we started to work on a, on a blockchain, basically we said, oh, this is a thing that the central bank should take in, make a regulation around it, and everybody goes for it. But we haven't reached that stage yet. So, um, if uh, how DLT will impact the economy if uh, it will be accepted legally? As all the new technology, yeah. it reduces costs. So obviously, it's good for the banks because they can reduce costs. But there's also on there a lot of pressure by competitors, by uh, uh, people asking for every time for more services. So it's for us. It's, it's we need to be very active as uh, as uh, as partners with the banks. You know, we need to bring some uh, lower cost technology, better systems, and everything. So actually, it's a, it's a big change. We've been running on you know mainframes and things of this world for 30 years, and now we're changing to something much faster and much more. Uh, cost effective. So I say in the overall we're lowering the cost of doing the same thing and we're trying to do it better also. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, it is more likely that already developed countries will implement uh, blockchain um, first or in developing countries who would actually do it more eagerly? That's actually a very good question. Okay, I'm yeah, just curious to know the answer. Yeah, that's a very good question. I mean, today the, the most active people on blockchain are the developed country. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't get so much uh, traction on the, uh, let's say, in development countries. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it's good for them, and uh, because they will jump maybe one or two steps. You know, just like if we take another kind of example, you know. With, banks that didn't have any uh, infrastructure and they started directly on the mobile, you know. Everything, all the services provided on the mobile they didn't have branches and everything because it just a couple of steps. Uh, and they are faster than the old banks that have branches and so on. Obviously they can offer the same services but they, you know, they can reach a, a critical mass pretty fast this way. Obviously, if you go for DLT now as a brand new bank, you will be faster than the others. I know a couple of examples that have been doing this with us and uh, uh, I think they will be successful. But, you know, it's a big fight, a lot of financial institutions in this world, so we'll see.